Hi friends, it's Em and welcome back to another video. Today we are setting up my brand new bullet journal for January. January, in my opinion, is like the best month for reading. I don't know why, <laughs> but I feel like I always read the best books because it's all the books that I meant to read last year or ones that I'm just really, really excited about. So this year for January, we're, we're mixing it up a little bit. So the stickers I'm using are from Marigona Suli Art and Create With Mandy. And then I'm using a bunch of washi tape. So uh, this washi is from Notebook Therapy, which I love. I love their washi. Uh, and then the other two are from Marigona Suli. And then this awesome sort of iridescent dot grid paper from Archer and Olive. And I just, I felt like a book witch setup was perfect for January. Like it just, it just makes me so happy. I spent most of yesterday getting my 24 in 2024 set up. So what I'm really excited about, so for there's, as I've talked about, there's many, many, many 24 and 2024s. Um, this one is just backlist titles but I'm doing it with a twist this year where my 24 in 2024 is also going to be all BIPOC authors which it was not a challenge to come up with 24 BIPOC author books that I wanted to read at all really the challenge was finding some of certain genres that I wanted to read because you if you know me you know I'm not a huge non-fiction or historical fiction girly so that part was a little bit rough but I am very excited for it. There, I didn't include them for the most part on my TBR for the month just because I had no idea that February was going to be this batshit <laughs> in terms of NetGalley arcs. Like, it is, it is downright bananas. Like, January was bad, but I finished it. I finished January, like... It's December 29th and I'm finally finished with my January arcs. And I did, you know, still read a fair number of backlist titles. But I think in February I have like over 10 arcs due. Like definitely over 10 and it's very intimidating. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Never mind, exactly 10. But, you know, part of that might have been maybe I read some of them previously. I don't know. But we're getting into it. I'm also starting to put in my holds for my 12 friends, 12 Rex challenge. So love interest has already come in. I snagged um, Butcher and Blackbird from Book of the Month this month. And then most everything else I have a copy of already from like KU or whatever. And Tress of the Emerald Sea is probably going to be one of the first ones that I get done off of my 24 and 24 because my friend Ashley has been like, we're buddy reading this, we're buddy reading this, and I love that energy. I love it so much. <laughs> but for my 24 and 24, I think that like it inspired the the quote that I'm gonna be writing in here, which is if you only read the books that everyone else is reading, you can only think what everyone else is thinking. Which I was just like, yes. <laughs> so I'm gonna give you some highlights or like ones that I'm really excited for from my 24 and 24 challenge while we set up this first little page so I have a fair number of these on my shelves in terms of like fantasy novels because you know that's my jam um, we've got the hurricane wars these violent delights the oleander sword Tessa Miata is no hero ray bearer Parable of the Sower, The Gilded Ones, and The Daughters of Izdahar. So that's like a third of my 24 and 24 is just, is just like sci-fi fantasy, which we love. They also have like some extra bonus books for like certain genres. And another like sci-fi fantasy is The Principal Moments. So that one got got from Illumicrate in December because I just started an Illumicrate subscription mostly because I am so gaga over the sprayed edges 
I'm a sprayed edges girly. I went to Barnes and Noble and bought a book that I already own because it had really pretty straight sprayed edges and my version at home didn't. <laughs> I feel like January is also the month where I get into nonfiction. So I have a, a small little pile <laughs> of uh, nonfiction books that I want to read. For Knox Book Club, uh, this month we are reading Fun Home, which I'm excited about. Um, then there's also a book I got, I think, I don't remember who recommended it to me, but it's called Building a Second Brain by Tiago Forte. And it's a proven method to organize your digital life and unlock your creative potential. Which, those are like so many buzzwords for me that I, I bought a physical book. And I think, I don't know, I might have the ebook too. I have no idea. And then finally, My Money, My Way by Kumiko Love. I've had this on my shelf for a while because I'm like, yes, I need to budget. So clearly I must buy a book to learn how to budget. <laughs> and then I never read it. I also have The Financial Diet. Um, on my shelf to just sort of go through. I still haven't, I still haven't done that. I've had that since before we moved to Knoxville. It's been almost three years. Well, more than that, probably five years because it was on my shelf before we moved. Anyways. <laughs> now we're just getting into like my basic spreads that I do every month. So we have book mail. I, I'm not expecting a bunch of book mail. Um, but I will say that I am trying to do my book buying ban in January just to sort of help me reset. I, I did pre-order the Atlas Complex from Barnes & Noble. Usually I'm all about doing the indie pre-order, but I really liked the cover color from Barnes & Noble. So that is my, that is, should be my last book purchase, excluding Illumicrate because that's a subscription and book of the month because that's a subscription. Those will just sort of keep coming Which I'm not mad about. I'm not mad And then my net galley tracker Y'all You would not believe this So usually I'm a huge I'm a huge net galley requester, right? I think right now I have five pending requests Look at me five pending requests but I do also have 38 unreads that I need to deal with, so <laughs> we'll see. I do think, you know, that I want to be more intentional about the books that I'm requesting, especially since, like, if I want to be reading diversely, I need to be requesting diversely, and I most certainly am not currently. So we're just keeping that in mind. I really love each month when I do my reading log just because I like I letter in the names and titles of the books all fun and cute so we have two pages not because I think I'm going to read two pages worth of books but because some of these book titles are long and like I want to make sure that I have room to write all of them I also this like iridescent paper it's from the Archer and Olive's uh, celestial subscription box and it's so thin so usually right with Archer and Olive paper, you're like, oh, okay, it's really thick and you can do watercolor on it and all that stuff. But when you do a bunch of this junk journaling style stuff, you put them in and then your notebook is just enormous. And it won't close. That's mostly the big thing. But this is a lot thinner. So, you know, it doesn't add too much sort of chunk to it, which I love. Now, with the reading log, we have so much, like I mentioned earlier, so many Nat Galley arcs to read. We have all my three non-fictions. And it's kind of overwhelming. It kind of gives me anxiety. But I think that, you know, I feel like in December I was reading a bunch of fantasy ones and it was taking forever and I was feeling so anxious. And now, this month, you know, it... There's a lot more romance. There's still a lot of fantasy in there, right? Like Trust the Emerald Sea, The Tainted Cup, The Book of Doors, and Fathom Folk. But, oh, and Tales of the Celestial Kingdom. But I think that's a novella. I hope that's a novella. <laughs> I hope that's not 500 pages. Um, but there's also so many romances that I'm excited for that I'm going to get to read in January. So Love Interest by Claire Gilmore, um, which came out. It's on my 12 and 12. Then we have Bride by Allie Hazelwood, which is going to be my first foray into the Omegaverse. 
and I can't say it's gonna be my last because it is a duology, but it's probably my penultimate. <laughs> I'm not, I'm just not into it. <laughs> not. <laughs> then we have A Love Song for Ricky Wilde by Tia Williams, who like, I just love, I love her books. Um, her, A Perfect Find, I think, that's on my 24 and 24. Um, and she's gonna be at Love Y'all Fest in February, which I will also be at. N not that like, not that she knows who I am or anything like that, but I, I will be in the same room as her, which is exciting. Um, then there's How You Get the Girl by Anita Kelly, which I have just loved their books so much in like a kind of, they're just kind of like a queer punch to the throat where like you, you stop and you're like sad and then I don't know. It's just, I'm really excited for it. And then there's The Catch by Amy Lee, which I think is her third in the Influencer series, which means it should be the final one, but I, I honestly don't know. Um, and then This Day Changes Everything by uh, Edward Underhill, I think. I really liked their first one about the uh, piano concerto stuff and I think this one's gonna have a little bit of a sci-fi twist on it and then right on cue by Fallon Ballard she just like she makes me laugh her books read so quickly and I'm just really excited for it so there's oh my goodness what is that we've got 10 through there those are 15 books on my TBR which as a mood reader as a mood reader, that feels extremely oppressive. <laughs> but the thing is, is that if I'm, if I'm reading, I know that I'm going to read Fun Home for Book Club, right? And I know that I'm going to, I'm probably going to get through most of these and there will still be room. There's still going to be plenty of room for a little extra fun books. <laughs> Sometimes what I do is I start my books from my like January TBR in December, so I get a head start. <laughs> I haven't done that yet. Right now, I think I'm just about to start reading The Hexologists, which I don't really have any idea what it's about, except that I think it has something to do with hexes and some kind of science behind it. No idea, but I'll let you know if it's good. <laughs> I'm also just really excited to like prioritize the challenges this year. So 52 book club, um, my 100 uh, books by BIPOC authors and like A to Z readathon. Those are really fun. Bookopoly also. I would be remiss if I did not promote my own challenge with Jess Bookopoly. And I don't know, I'm just like, I'm so excited to get to start like filling out those spreads and stuff like that. <laughs> and so it's it's my standard style here, right? To just like letter them in a circle and add the lines. It just makes my heart happy. I like it when it's like focused in the center. And I do need a two-page TBR. Like we know we know that by now. And then I'm just going in and like adding. This is a very washy, heavy setup for me. I don't think I'm usually this heavy with washi, but they just look so cute together. And I think also like using those little book scraps from Mandy's shop, it just makes my heart happy. Like, I think I've bought those, I don't even know how many times now, cause I just really enjoy them and I want to use them again and again and again. <laughs> and then of course, I was kind of stingy with the stickers on the first couple pages just because I didn't, I wanted to make sure that they lasted. So I'm going back through and I'm adding a few more. That's totally normal. And then we're going to set up my January in review page. So I'm going to keep making the review videos with Jess at the end of each month. I'm really excited for it. Um, as you all know, there's not going to be one in December because there was no December setup because I was depressed and I couldn't deal. So that's where we're at on that. I might, tr it, I don't know if I can do a review of this month's reading because it's just been really hectic and just like not fun. And I don't think I would have a fun time doing it, but uh, I might do like 
some kind of review setup um, video instead because I don't want to I don't want to let Jess down but that's kind of where we're at I do still need to go through and fill out my TBR cart spread because like it is it's basically empty but it, I need to fill it out with all of the books that I want to read off my cart or more appropriately all the books that are on my cart because if they're not if they're if I don't want to read them they should not be on my cart so I think that might be part of it. I need to do like a little cute little audit. <laughs> but it just makes me so happy. And I like how, how shiny the paper is. Like I could just sit here all day just like tilting the paper to get a little more. We'll just see a little bit of shine. <laughs> and this, this spread, so January in review, I feel like I want to, I want to change it up, right? I'm not entirely content with the pie charts that I was doing and I'm not sure I'm not sure if I want charts or if I want it to be like a journal sort of thing do I want to print out book covers so if you have any ideas for that please let me know because I I don't know I just need a change and I still have plenty of stickers left over so they're for when I'm filling in the space on these like I'm not I'm not too concerned I just need to remember where I put them <laughs> But here's the final flip through. I hope you enjoyed. Go ahead and subscribe to my channel to see more videos and hit the like button if you liked it. Uh, comment down below what your books in January are gonna be. And as always, happy planning. <laughs>